Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on Adobe Live. I'd like to invite you to join the Adobe Live community and subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel and follow us at Adobe Live on Instagram so that you can stay up to date with the latest streams, updates, and more. It is now my sincere honor to introduce the amazingly talented guest for today's stream, illustrator and designer, Rob Zilla. Hi, Rob. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I can't complain. I can't complain. <laughs> and hello to everyone who's joining us live in the chat, whether you're over on Behance or watching on YouTube. Shout out to our moderator, Sam and Annika. They will be helping us today, relaying your questions, any comments and good vibes that you have to share with Rob while he's sharing his process with us today. I'll be able to get those over to him throughout our stream. So hello, Gareth. Hello, Liz. We got Paco in the chat. Make sure you let us know where you're tuning in from as you're watching live. And yeah. Wait, that, Paco's in the chat? Yeah, I see, I see Paco. I see Umacorn. Always great to see Umacorn in the chat. Yeah, Umacorn. Umacorn is like, when are you coming back? Like, I'll be oh, back soon. I see? There you go. Umacorn, you got your way. <laughs> So Rob, you know, this is really your show. I'd love for you to just do a quick intro about yourself, show us a little bit of your work, tell us about the work you do, and then lead us into what you have planned for us on the stream today. Well, um, we're gonna see, we're gonna get a behind the scenes look at how everything works. Um, I'm using Fresco and I'm drawing in vectors. Um, that's a rare thing really around yeah. here. Yeah, because everybody wants their different brushes, but with Vector, I have a limited amount of brushes, which means that in order to make it do what it does, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to push it just a little bit further. Um, mm -hmm. Before I get started, everybody out there, mm -hmm. everybody out there, mm -hmm. get your lightning emojis ready. Because I need that energy and we got to light this thing up. The secret sauce behind what I do involves a lot of electricity so you can go ahead and start warming up now uh -huh. you can copy and paste somebody else's lightnings but i want y'all to light it up let's put sam to work all right well you heard it here first everyone you heard rob put those <laughs> lightning bolts in the chat let's get it let's do all it right. all right so um i'm going right to my adobe express web page um i use this for presentations since it was called a since it was called Slate, Adobe Slate. Oh, wow. I'm aging myself right now. You have the gray hairs though. But um, just a little insight of what's going on here. And I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, hello, nerds. This is a whole thing just filled with illustration. It's a little bit about me. I'm not going to read it to you because we all adults. You're typing in a chat. That means you can read. And just examples of just some of the stuff that I've been doing with vector drawing, using everything from Adobe, Adobe Ideas to Adobe Draw to Gemini to Fresco, and just having fun. Some things I got paid for. I even created things that exist in real life, which is just kind of cool. Like this this past February, I got to do the warm up jerseys for the Washington Capitals. Wow. Which was which is which was just a big thing. Like this dude did this on his iPad with Adobe Fresco. <laughs> that's insane. That's yeah. crazy. That's even crazier. So uh... So I worked with ESPN. I drew LeBron James a thousand times. I drew Mike Tyson for fun. <laughs> John Wick for fun. I drew friends. I drew people who beat up people. But all in all, this is basically a rundown of the process if I have to go out of the iPad. As of late, I've been keeping everything within the iPad itself and it's a joy. I don't have to jump on a desktop to finish up some things, um, especially with them having Illustrator on the iPad. I can send it out of Fresco, go directly into the iPad. But everything starts off 
and I like to preach this and I'm going to preach this all day long. Everything starts off with the way that you are used to creating before you got the iPad. Mm. So blue line sketches, because I'm a comic book, the process of making comic book fan. Mm. I'm also a comic book movie fan, but I'm not that type of person who sits and read comic books. I'll open up a comic book and adore the line work. Mm. I'll, I'll adore the coloring. You know, how this person made this look like this. How did they get stationary figures to appear as if they're moving? That's my whole thing. Um, I want to make it do what it doesn't do. Definitely. So blue line sketches, just like the old heads back in the day. Um, they use a photo sensitive blue pencil because when they do the next stage, which is inking, it just goes right on top like butter. Wow. And I apologize for my subject. Um, this was done a long time ago. I don't condone anything that he has done, but that's neither here nor there. You don't know what I'm talking about, then you're fine. <laughs> um, but my son was a big fan prior to all this, all these different incidents. So I drew a poster for him and this is the work that I did for him because he was my client. So I go into mm. shading. Wow. Black colors. Start to embellish some forms. That's in insane. Insane. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, I'm on social media. I draw sports for sport. Sport. <laughs> so everyone bragging. knows what you're about. <laughs> yeah, I'm bragging right now. But um <laughs> That was actually done using Adobe Draw. Wow. Okay, but today we're going to be in Fresco, right? We're going to be in Fresco. That's be the in Fresco. evolution. Like Adobe yeah. Draw went into a cocoon. Mm. And okay. It, matched. it just bust out of the cocoon. It was like, hey, here I am. Deal with nice. it. Nice. <laughs> you want to talk or you want to create? That's basically what it was saying. And at this point, I think I should get to the creation portion of it oh i th i mean we've got a lot of lightning bolts in the chat a lot of people are, are ready for what you've got planned for us rob so let's do it <laughs> as a matter of fact where are you, there you are. <laughs> i don't want to expose anything oh um, can you can you can you adjust that cursor a little bit rob so we could see all which cursor just that uh oh, your little mouse there. point yeah wow that still that still blows my mind no it's crazy it's cool yeah. Keep it on so faster. I can use it to point at stuff. Then. <laughs> All right, bet. All right, so um, yeah, this is my playground. This is okay. this is Adobe Fresco. Nice. Um, today I will be drawing a, a friend of mine who is also a music producer. Um, Ooh. I came up with the idea because I usually draw sports, but I didn't want to draw anyone that was like super famous in sports. I wanted to actually draw a uh, high school for now mm. but of course with recent developments they have something called nil so that's name mm. image and likeness so i'm not even going to mention the, the player's name on here because i don't have permission to mm. um the same went for i can mention this player the same went for Dennis Rodman's daughter, who plays for my local soccer club. Oh, okay. The Washington, the Washington Spirit. Nice. So she was my number two that I wanted it to draw. But I can't because of NIL. Oh, okay. So I really wanted to do a sports card, but then I wanted to put a twist on a sports card and say, okay, what if they had sports cards or these trading cards of my favorite producers? You know, how would, how would that look, you know? Um, so I pick a friend of mine, his name is Kev Brown. Kev Brown is a music producer that lives here in Maryland, PG County to be specific, um, Landover, Landover, Palmer Park. But um, he's worked with the likes of De La Soul, um, DJ Jazzy Jeff, Biz wow. P, rest in peace, and um, Buster Rhymes. Wow. Um, so he has a catalog full of music and um, 
he, he, he streams on Twitch, you know, Kev Brown. Um, but I was listening to that last night while I was kind of like getting things prepped for the day. Nice. So a little housekeeping. Um, if you look at my, my setup, it's a mirror image almost because everything that is in most people's fresco on the right is on my left and everything that's on the left is on the right. Um, it's just where I was comfortable working like this ever since the first app came out. But if you would like to switch yours too, all you gotta do is jump right here into the app settings and you go to general and right here where it's toolbar, say left or right. That's all that I did. Oh yeah, now I think about it, my toolbar is on the left usually. Oh, yeah. okay. It's a pain because I'm right-handed, so I need I need my tools over here. Nice. On the right-hand side. Um, Very cool. Good tip. Yeah. Another thing, this circle over here is my touch modifier. That's my homeboy. You know, um, he's a Gemini, so sometimes <laughs> he's filled on the inside. Other times he's filled on the outside. But what it does is it changes the nature of all the tools that I'm using. And we're going to talk a little bit about that as we go along. Awesome. So let's go ahead and expose the blue line sketch. What I have so far, if you're actually looking at it, it's just a corner of it. Look at look at how much I have it magnified. So most of these trading cards are two and a half by three and a half. Um, what I do is I like to work at a high resolution, even though it's vector. So I just set mm -hmm. mine at 2,500 by 3,500. What it does mm -hmm. is it gives me a consistent setting on whatever tool that I use. If I was to use the actual measurement, then my 3.5 vector brush would be much larger than it would be if I was to use a normal, a different format. Oh, okay. All right, so we got Kev here. Um, he's actually has his name here on the beat machine that he uses, and that's a NPC Live. We got some piano keys, we got some chords all over the place, we got speakers on one side. We got some mm -hmm. chords that came out of nowhere and it's like running, running around off of the right hand side of the composition. Uh, he's tapping with his left hand, which is actually on the right hand side, and then he's twisting knobs with his right hand, which is actually on the left hand side. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of stuff going on. But the next step that I would take from here is to just simply open a new layer. I would grab my vector brush of choice, which would be that round right there. I always start off with round. I don't start off with taper. I use taper in order to create these little fine marks. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Um, pick the hue that I like. I like the ink and black. And what I would do at this point is I would come inside of this composition and I would just simply begin to trace this composition. Oops, something's off. Oh. Smoothness is at 90. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Four. These things are checked. Nothing really done. It's just in case you want to look under the hood. <laughs> um, but I know you guys. What happened to my last layer just now? There it is. I know uh, you guys. Uh, Y'all don't want to sit here and watch me trace over a drawing that I already drew. <laughs> one thing I will tell you when I do this process and you can tell like right here I like to overshoot my lines oh and you know Adobe has this new thing now in Fresco where I can hold that and it'll snap right into a circle now. Ooh. so for all you folks who say I can't draw circles drawing circles are more neat more easier now than they ever were so no excuses guys it does no, it for us <laughs> none at all man don't, don't come in here with excuses <laughs> so um, the reason why I overshoot these is because of that touch modifier that I mentioned before. Mm. By holding it down in the center being filled, it turns whatever brush that I'm using into an eraser. Little tidbit, before they came out with a taper brush, we used to go with an eraser on the round brush because that was the only vector brush. And we used to tape our own lines manually. Wow. And then somebody was like, well, why don't we just make you a taper brush? You know, thanks. Huh? <laughs> um, if I take the if 
I take the modifier, slide it to the outside and fill the whole entire thing, then the nature changes again and it becomes what I call the terminator. So it oh. just trims all those overshot lines for me. Now, you don't want to work with both hands, do you? So if you double click it, it fills the center and locks it. If you press it one more time, it fills the outside and lock it. So you can still just work with one hand. Nice. So you're about to see a whole bunch of vector trimming. Oh, right okay. Up. Okay. So that's like your process. You you overshoot those lines and then you just trim them all off. Trim them all off. I'm nice. I'm like a, I'm like a line barber out here. <laughs> <laughs> but um that's cool. Get that out the way. Um, I'm going to take this layer. I'm just going to slide it above. I'm going to double click into that layer. Oh. And that layer is going to give me access to everything. Um, my blue lines for this project, since I was watching his stream and drawing last night, I did too much refinement. So I'm just going to roll with these in the, in the black form. Okay. So we have everything here. It just needs to be trimmed. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take this glasses layer that I have here and I'm going to merge it down. Triple click, click, ah, and just start, oops, triple click, and then just start terminating all these so, marks. So you just merged that glasses layer with, what with was the, that? The face layer. With the fa Oh, wow. So it's just all together it's just to make it quicker, I guess, to trim those vectors off. Yeah, because mm -hmm. and I forgot to mention this. Forgive me. I'm gonna double clip, click into my reference file and make that visible for you. This is the old photo of Kev. He no longer has the oval frame glasses. Ah, OK. He has more of a. A square style glass. I mean, glasses frames. Mm. Um, and all I simply did was just ask him, like, yo, where did you get your glasses from? Uh, he was okay. like, he was like, this company. And so I just went to that company, found the shape, and um, used it as a reference. So a lot of these aren't merged yet, because if you notice, there's things that just floating on one side. I'm going to play with symmetry a little bit, make things that's on the right-hand side. Mirror themselves on the left hand side just to fill up space. Did not mean to do that. One, two, three. So we're all underway here watching uh, Rob do some vector trimming. Let us know if you have any questions for him while he's working. Um, I am very interested in watching this vector process in Fresco because I'm definitely a pixel person. So I'm I'm really uh, <laughs> I'm really excited to see uh, your process working like this. Yeah, I got all the textures. That's the cool thing. <laughs> like, what do they do to get all the textures? I want some textures, <laughs> but unfortunately, nah. It's not the nature of the beast right now. It's possible, but not without having a huge file. Nice. And trim up these eyebrows a little bit. And ladies and gentlemen, sketches are just a secret language that you have, little messages that you send yourself. <laughs> and you, you basically, it's shorthand. You basically say, hey, you know, this is going to look like this. This is going to look like this. And it's a language that you understand. And oftentimes you have to communicate that to your, your client. Because when I have clients and I submit my sketches, um, I always want the opportunity to explain to them what's going on. And I always submit my sketches to clients in the blue line form. Oh, interesting. That's a nice little uh, insight, definitely. I think uh, people are always wondering about uh, people's uh, professional process working with clients. I always tell them, if it's in blue line, that means that I can go and change whatever you need change. 
I think that's a good indicator for people. (laughs) But if I go to black, it's going to set you back. (laughs) Very cool. Those are connected. So I'm just going to come in here and, oops. It's doing something weird. I don't think I have the jitter on. Oh, what are you finding is happening? It's it's looking bubbly coming out. Um, Uh And things are a little different for me Mm because I had to actually reinstall Fresco. Oh, okay. So the line isn't behaving exactly as you expected, I guess. Yeah, the way that I I, I left it. Ah, okay. Hey, we all have to we all have to tweak our settings uh, every now and again. I guess, yeah, definitely. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> um, one little hint: when you're drawing folks, like drawing people, it's cool to. Um, what I like to do is I like to take one eye, shift it on the other side, just to get that symmetry. Oh, it's like oh. it's like instant cosmetic surgery for them. Um, because you know psychologically they say that the most aesthetic faces are the symmetrical faces so any feature that you can take and translate over to the other side just adjust it like briefly works out well oh that's a really great tip actually especially for people who are usually uh drawing people and that's a lot of what you do rob i guess in the the athletes that you capture in your work and yeah i mean would you i mean sports you draw sports for sport i mean that's what you said in the beginning <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like wow that's so self-explanatory like best bio ever <laughs> yeah some of these sports guys man you wouldn't believe some of the vanity edits they asked me to do Ooh, I'm save that. For, I'm save that for my book. Okay, cool. Okay, well, everyone, grab Rob's book when he, when he comes out with it. <laughs> grab but, my picture book. <laughs> yeah, but but for follow now, follow him on social media. Um, our mods are putting his links in the chat um, throughout the stream so that you can follow him. All the places that he is uh, posting his work and chatting, you will be able to keep up with his with his happenings and whereabouts, so. I'm even on that new one. Oh, uh, TikTok? <laughs> no, the new one. There's a newer one? Oh, no. The Sky one. I'm oh, even on that Blue one. Blue Sky. Yeah. Got an invite. There's a lot of empty space in there. There's a lot of echoes. Interesting. Well, for now. Well, it yeah. won't last. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get loud pretty soon. Mm-hmm. There's just a bunch of people walking in empty spaces making noises right now. Interesting. <laughs> and the noise they make is, I don't like the other one anymore. Oh, well, you know, don't you love uh, everyone, especially the way artists relate to social media is like, <laughs> could go for on forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I got my verification taken away, so I, I really don't feel good about the other one. Oh, okay. So that's fine. <laughs> I miss my little some. check mark. I miss my little check mark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I earned my little check mark. <laughs> So, so you, okay, yeah. What 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 are you doing here? Um, just moving around. Um, mm-hmm. if I if I find one, I take it out, basically. Oh, okay. Um, well, also what I'm doing is I'm double checking. Um, I'm double checking my layers because I have everything kind of like breadcrumbed right now. Oh, okay. So trying to figure out what features and things are actually on which layer. On which layer, yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you notice, I'm not going to trim that because that eyebrow is actually going to be, I'm going to trim it up in here, but the eyebrow is actually going to be done in black. So I'm going to trim it up in there. Okay. Okay. I think we can go ahead and add, we can make shampoo. We can add the head to the shoulders. <laughs> Merge it. So head Ooh. and shoulders are now merged. I uh, have to triple click again in order to get my trimming feature. And this collar is no longer going through his neck. 
every time you merge a layer, I like feel like I'm holding my breath because I'm I very rarely merge my layers <laughs> with much confidence. I'm just like, okay, well, what if I need to go back though? <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know, if you feel that way, duplicate what you have, mm. hide it, mm. make it invisible, jump right. back in, just duplicate it. True. But I've been there. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'll lose this. <laughs> and, yeah, it feels scary. <laughs> yeah, a lot of this stuff you had limits on 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 how many layers you you can you can work with when they first came out. Mm -hmm. So you had to be very careful with this stuff. It was made out of glass when it first came out. Yeah, but now it's a powerhouse. I mean, it's just the no layer limits thing is enough to just keep me real happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember paying $9.99 mm -hmm. to have 10 layers. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we came we came some way. Um, what I'm going to do now is I have these speakers on their own separate layer. Okay. And I'm just going to hide it. Get them out of the way. They're going to exist blue. Just so I, I, can, I can have the feel for it. But... I'm gonna get them all the way out the way. Okay. Um, what I really need to work on now is the beat machine itself, Ooh. which is right here. Well, let's do the piano keys. Yeah, so, like there's a lot of detail down there. Yeah, and I even did this little weird trick where I take it and transform it down just so I can give you the front face of it. So it runs off the composition. Yeah. Um. I need to get those black keys isolated. Okay. So I'm gonna come in here and oh, gotta make sure I triple tap. Come in here and just stroke through those. And the blue just serves as saying, "Hey, this is where that line was." Just in case I happen to pull something out okay. and get get too far down the line and be like, oh man, where was that line before? Okay, that's good. So that just serves as a nice little visual touch point for you, a reference, so. Red crumbs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I Hustle, like that, yeah. Like you said, Hustle like you said before, exactly. <laughs> red crumbs. So PM's done. Um, nice. Now the little tricky beat machine thing. The MPC Live. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and click out of that. And I just want to hide a bunch of stuff. Okay. I'm going to get it out the way just so I can see the NPC by itself. So we hit him. Let's hide his hands. Okay. And this corridor, which has a purpose later. Let's hide that. Okay. And I think we have everything pretty much isolated. You jump into that layer. Do I name Do I name my layers? No. <laughs> Nobody has time for that. Can you do it after the fact and make everybody think that you are like a good boy or Girl Scout? Yeah, you go ahead and do that. <laughs> oh, but for the time it. being, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you gotta keep your priorities straight. There are you more know? pressing matters right now than naming the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, naming layers. <laughs> oh, you gonna give your layers a god, a godmother or something next? Like, no, nobody's <laughs> one on it. Okay, all of this is going out of here. So that just knob. doing more trimming. Just more. Yeah, this is this is just going to be this the whole thing is just going to be vector vector trimming mm -hmm. on Adobe Live with Rob Zilla. <laughs> but I think that's great because, uh, you know, I don't think enough people know what the touch shortcut does and it's vast amount of capabilities. So it's cool seeing you use it for vectors and, and using it in a way that maybe people aren't using it already. So yeah, I, was, it's, I was calling it space modulator, like um, <laughs> Marvin the Martian all before. <laughs> It's okay. The sentiment is there. We know what you what you mean. <laughs> yeah, space modulator. 
which is just a you know it was a it was a firework <laughs> if you're old enough to remember marvin your space spartan <laughs> who could forget that hat yeah <laughs> they never took his they never revealed his head oh you're right <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, while Rob is, is working his way through this beat machine, I just love to remind everyone that he is creating a, he's doing a spin on a collectible card for his friend who's a, a major music producer. Yeah, he's major. Like, he's like that's super cool. He's probably smirking right now. And he's uh, working in Adobe Fresco, but it's all vectors right now. All vectors when Robzilla is around, so... It's really cool. And uh, yeah, we're just chugging along. This is really awesome. Are you going to give this to him? Yeah. You're going you're gonna to really like print it and, and give it to him? Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to give him the file and be like, hey, man, like this whatever is... you want to do with it, go for it. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll love it. Feel very special. All these shout outs and whatnot. <laughs> Yeah, especially since I mentioned his Twitch. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, he'd be like, <laughs> where's that traffic at? <laughs> let's get this Let's get this hype train going. Speaking of hype trains, man, did, is it still lightning outside? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It's quiet in the storm. <laughs> That's what I miss about the live experience of doing Adobe Live. Yeah. <laughs> is like just happen to look up and you see the monitor with all this stuff going on oh like, yeah what in the world is going on on the screen <laughs> we need some more uh more lightning bolts for rob but you know there's a lot of people who they're not watching live they're going to be catching this replay which is also a great advantage of adobe live because if you miss something just play it right back yeah, you can come in here and speed up the way that I work and make me look really impressive. <laughs> I trust us, like your work is already beyond impressive. I mean, how does uh, doing Adobe Live compare to drawing live on ESPN, for example? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I was blown away by that. I'm just like, whoa. I was half asleep. I, I was half asleep. Talk about pressure. Did you feel, did, how did you feel? Like, how was that experience? It was totally normal because of Adobe Live. See, that's awesome. Yeah. Like, I just, only thing I asked them is, where do you want me to look up and look at whenever I look up? And they were like, hey, listen, the producers and everything, hey, listen, we're going to be going live in about 15 minutes. Are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm good. He was like, no, I don't think you understand. We're going live in 15 minutes. I was like, yeah, I heard you. (laughs) I'm good. Like, I've yeah. been doing Adobe Live for a long time. Yeah, I mean, anyone, you guys, uh, you can uh, check out Rob's past streams. He's been a frequent guest and is a major uh, part of the community. So you'll find a whole bunch of past streams from Rob if you're ever wondering about his vector process. And um, some of the stuff is the same. It's just that the tools evolved. Right. The process is still the same, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's super cool. They need to check out your 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 course. Yeah, I'm gonna oh. plug you. Oh well, thanks, Rob. Uh-huh. <laughs> Definitely don't need to do. That. Yeah, I'm plugging you. Like, go You're ahead, so funny. check out her course. <laughs> thanks, Rob. That's right. I know. I know the drill because I did Skillshare. Oh yeah, you've got uh, quite a few Skillshare courses. I think. I want more. <laughs> hey, do some more, people. I mean, you're a teacher. I mean, you've been teaching for years, so that would be great to see more Skillshare courses from you. But in, as a holdover, everyone, you can just check out the many Skillshare courses that he already has until he gets us a new one. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on that new one, if anybody's listening. Um, oh, yes. So I mentioned Kev is from Landover. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first moved here in Maryland, um, that's when malls were still a thing, you know, that <laughs> malls are these these big buildings with a bunch of stores inside of them. Um, 
they're going the way of the dinosaur as of late. And mm. one mall in particular was Landover Mall, which is like right down the street from where, you know, where he lives. Um, I decided to put the logo for Landover Mall on his chest. Oh. And what I used was I used a new vector brush, which is the, the outline brush. Oh. Um, if you're not familiar with the outline brush, then good thing you're here. Um, the outline brush allows me to make these different strokes and paths that are like this. I begged for this thing for years. <laughs> um, imagine doing that Spider-Man illustration earlier with all the webbing that's on his suit. Wow. And I had a worker where I would draw a stroke draw another stroke, duplicate that layer, slide it out to the side just to get that width in between. Mm -hmm. But this is what I was asking for. And to make it even better, you can do the fill color for these as well. Um, mm -hmm. If you can't draw a circle, then you just simply tap down, you got a circle. It's just all kind of hacks for this. But I used it in order to get this mark on his chest. And the cool thing is I can come in now with my regular round brush or any brush in particular that's vector. And I can cancel out a couple of things in here just to give it that open space and let it breathe. Ah. <laughs> Anissa in the chat said, man, that was smooth. <laughs> and and that was just one one stroke and you get the whole the whole thing. The whole like, thing. <laughs> I was like, can I please have something like this? Your wish but, came true. Yeah, I spent so many hours <laughs> drawing Miles Morales. I think I left out a point. No, did I? Did I? Oh, did you miss a, I I a trim? I don't um, think I did. Did I? I don't I don't think you did. I don't think I did. <laughs> oh, oh well. Um, I think it's enclosed anyway. I need that for when I get to the flat color stage. So we're chipping <laughs> right along, folks. Um, this thing is coming together. Yes, it is. Um, we spent these short, these short periods of time together just making sure that everything doesn't have a tail on it anymore. Hmm. That's going to be solid. It's going to be solid. I don't have to trim it in there, just in case I choose to change the direction of these cords that's coming out of this machine, which was also done with the outline brush. Yeah, I mean, it's so clear now. It's just like the outline brush is your friend, everyone. Use it. <laughs> yes, the cords, some of the lines in the speakers, outline brush. The circles that make up some of these things. Yeah. Outline brush. And the thought of you just doing that first little, just that one dot tap and you instantly have a circle didn't occur to me at first. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> I um, steal that. Used to have a hack for that too. I used to, with the regular <laughs> brush, tap, then change the size, mm. tap within it. And you get an awkward little circle, but it's, it was it was super quick. <laughs> it was super, super, super duper quick. Yeah. Um, this is also a result of that outline brush. The vent that's here in the back. Okay. Um, what I did was I simply drew one. Duplicated the layer, slid it over, merged it. Duplicated that, slid it over, merged it. Duplicated that, slid it over, merged it. And eventually you got the whole entire vent within about five moves. Very nice. All you video gamers. Um, <laughs> so that was a quick hack. Um, okay. the little plus or X inside of the the screw outline brush. Wow. So all those things. All right. So blah, 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 blah. We got hands to do next. Okay. We're working on the hands next. Hello to Wade in the chat. He's giving you some lightning bolts, Rob. Yes. That's my giving lightning buddy. Light that's my lightning buddy. Wade. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you know what? Nice. 
when I do the hands. Yeah, what's hands, your what's your thinking? I wanted to make sure I could see him through the blue. I can't. All right. Oh. A few more trims. Okay. And you know, overshoot everything. Mm-hmm. Did that wrong. Get inside of that group. Um does everybody know how to make groups in Fresco? That's I don't think I don't question think it chat. uh I don't think it hurts to to give everyone a little refresher. All right, right if I jump in here, somehow I isolate it. That's different. I've never seen this before. How did I isolate? Oh, what happened? <laughs> I isolated oh. within this group. I think the modifier did it. Maybe. I'm just hoping I can get out of it. Oh, you can. You may have just changed your layer visibility. Because uh, there is an isolating visibility feature, I think. When did they put that in there? Why didn't they tell me? <laughs> I, I stumbled tell you upon that by accident, like the other day, no lie. So, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is, this is how I find out new features, for real, for real. I don't look at those little things because I'm usually opening this thing up to work. <laughs> and... You know, no disrespect to the little videos that's on there, but um, if I'm trying to get in and get out, it's just like a grocery store. <laughs> you might have that display right there of some chips, but I'm not going to stop if I'm just in there to grab some sugar. All right, that hand is done. That um, looks clean. The other one should be able just to tap over, come to it. These are actually my hands. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, how many reference photos went into this? It was like, so it was your friend's photo, and then yep. it was your hands, and then what else? <laughs> my, my hands just coming in. I was like, <laughs> with the phone in one hand and drawing, drawing the hand with the other hand. Uh, um, took a picture of my own hands, put it in there. Hey, that's a good tip. If you need a reference, if you need yourself. a reference. You are you are one of the best reference ever, or somebody that's near you. Yeah, instant reference. That's I awesome. use my kids for references. Like, <laughs> if I'm drawing like other children, mm -hmm. like come in here and do this. Jump like this right here for daddy. <laughs> I'm sure they love being a part of the process. <laughs> yeah, they used to. Now they now they ask, like, why am I doing this? Mm for money oh, okay <laughs> so <laughs> it's like yes i get paid to do all of this amazing drawing now please participate <laughs> and this is real time i wanted to keep it as live as possible no definitely i think this uh it's always Yo, super great <laughs> that blew my mind just now <laughs> yeah so, so just like on these beat machines, there's a way to isolate a certain track. Mm -hmm. You can solo a track. <laughs> now we got a way to solo a track on here because I used mm -hmm. to make beats too. Oh, okay. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> as as far as groups are concerned, there's two ways you can go about making a, a group. Um, okay. let's let's take his name instead of the name of the machine because I won't promote this machine unless they're giving me a free machine. Mm. So one way is that you simply just grab one layer, drag it on top of the other. Whatever layer you put on top is going to be on top. Okay. Like if I came from this bottom and up, then when I open that thing up, Kev is going to be at the top. Oh. I think he was already. Oh. Another way that you can go about doing this mm -hmm. is um, you can have one layer selected, you can hit that modifier, tap another layer, because you can tap two layers at a time. I mean, you tap multiple layers at a time. So you select both, then you just hit that little folder and it puts it all into one merge layer. I mean, in one layer group, but I don't want layer groups. Oh. This okay. is final. I don't want these to be separate anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap there to get that layers menu or properties. And I'm just gonna Merge that down, make it all one. Nice. And I'm gonna let that float. So when I get ready to color the beat machine, this will still float on top of the beat machine. 
Um, looking at everything else, let's bring some things back in. I was going to leave the hands isolated because the one hitting the pad, I was going to animate, make it go up and down. Oh, okay. I don't think I'm have enough time to do that today. So what I want to do is ungroup that layer. Got him there. And I'm just going to merge him down. Merge him down again. Uh, we can merge him down on the shirt. Oh, okay. We're going all the way. Boom. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling spicy. <laughs> You're doing um, great. <laughs> come just over the beat machine. Reveal that beat machine. I'm gonna leave that on top. Okay. It'll be good this time. And I actually need to. Okay, I got it. Let me huh. find out what this is. Huh. I wish there was multiple views of the actual layers oh. where you can get an enlarged view of the layer. Oh, okay. And you can see it all big and wide up front. Mm. Um, I don't think I have anything on those those layers there. Because when I... It doesn't look something. like anything is... Yeah, it's flickering there. on and off, yeah. It's nothing there at all. Um, Phantom layers. <laughs> so, I think for the most part, with the exception of his shirt, we are all trimmed up. Okay, cool. And now we can come in here and have some fun. Now. This is fun too. Like, if you got some nice music going, <laughs> time no, will pass. Definitely. Absolutely. And the, hey, this is all part of the process. They're they're seeing they're seeing it all. And uh that's very valuable too. So and I think uh, we got some chill hop playing, don't we? We got some chill hop. Oh yeah, they always play a little nice music to set the vibe for the stream. <laughs> Hope everyone's okay. enjoying it. <laughs> we are good. Oh awesome. So I like to come underneath all of this stuff to add my shadows. Um oh. My work, my philosophy when it comes to doing work like this, especially if you, you're dealing with likenesses and clients and vanity edits, is to hold back on color as much as possible. Oh. If they can see how good it looks in black and white, then you're going to be spot on whenever you apply color. Oh, um, nice. My, my favorite tool for color is the lasso tool, Ted Lasso. <laughs> And Ted Lasso is roommates with my other favorite tool, and that's Magic Wand. Um, so we got those two together. But what I like to do is I like to draw using a lasso tool. So I'll come in here, start putting these shadow groups together. I right, got my cliff notes on where I want all of this stuff. And this is on a separate layer, like a fresh layer that you're doing this lasso tool work? Um, it can be, mm. or it could be on one that I already have. Okay. Um, I can actually jump out of it, create a new layer, and then bring back the last lasso group that I had before. Oh, I like that flexibility. I like that security um, yeah. where it doesn't really feel like I'm taking a risk, but it feels like I'm taking a risk. Yeah. Let's get the shadow in the lip. That's awesome. I'm going to go a little bit rough. Working real fast in real time. <laughs> well, Rob is, is going crazy with this lasso tool as he's starting to work out where he's going to put his shadows we're a little more than halfway through this stream. So thank you so much to everyone who has joined us so far and will join us. And if you would like to nominate yourself or someone you know to be a guest on Adobe Live, you can do so by submitting your recommendations for creatives in the tab on Behance. You could be where Rob is sitting. In my actual <laughs> office. 
<laughs> in his office. <laughs> so I made a boo boo with the lasso tool. Oh, not okay. to worry. No Touch worries. modifier, double tap. Mm -hmm. Go over that part that I don't want, and it disappears. It subtracts oh, it. That's nice. It doesn't add it on at all. Oh, a little double tap on the touch modifier was able to subtract from your selection. That's, I'm taking that with me. Thank you for that. That is good. I never really thought of using the lasso tool in this way, honestly. I'm more of a lasso tool to pull things apart and move them around for transformations. But uh, I'm really liking the the way that you're carving these areas out to add uh, these shadows in. And what I used to do is I used to just take that same, the same pin mm -hmm. that I'm using and I would outline a certain section. My son is coming in the front door right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would outline certain sections and then hold and do a long press in order to get inside of it. Oh. Um, or use the bucket tool. And what I found was, yep, there the door. <laughs> what I found out is that it costs me more time because if you don't have a, a area enclosed all the way. It can be the most frustrating thing ever because it will allow you to fill that area in. Yes. Okay. And you'd be like, oh, come on. Yeah. But with the lasso tool, you can be sure that the section that, is closed. Yeah. Completely. Because just like that last section I just did, I didn't mm -hmm. close it. And I get a little reminder here at the bottom to close that lasso. Ah, uh, okay. Got it. So just like, hey, wait hey, a second. You <laughs> yeah, you didn't close that, Rob. You might come back. Yep. You ain't going nowhere before you close this. That's really great that that uh, ended up saving you a lot of uh, a headache, you know, and uh, in modifying your, your workflow and process in that way. I love when that happens. <laughs> it's just like, oh, a better, easier way yeah. to do that's something. What, that's that's awesome. what we all looking for. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, we draw over, we draw things over and over again just to achieve that one thing. No, oh, definitely. You see, folks who usually see me in the chat, I'm way different on the screen. I'm not a troll like I am in the chat <laughs> all before. It's okay. And after this is uh, over, you'll be right back into the chats of other streams. Rolling again. Hyping people up and, and people will be like, is that Rob from before? Yep. <laughs> Just like car on cartoons, trolls don't wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Was it was it Dora? <laughs> I, and I kept know. I kept saying like, "Yo, wear homeboy pants." I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. You do a lot of portraits and, you know, like you said, with uh, your clients, you do a lot of vanity edits and stuff from time to time. And do you, <laughs> do you, is it true that you have a photography background with like teaching photography? Yes. And I took a lot of that. I taught photography, but it's a weird story. Um, I had no experience prior to it when I interviewed um for that certain position at the school and this is a brand new school that was getting a full wet lab with the enlargers all this stuff inside the dark room revolving wow. door dark room wow and and um the principal was in a different room and he was like yeah i need i need a photography teacher as well i was like i can teach that he's like you have experience i was like no but i can learn it over the summer and be ready. Um, and that I was because um, I was the one who actually put all the enlargers together. That was part of my learning my and God. set up that whole entire thing. Um, learned how to meter, 
learned all these different things along the way and had that classroom ready to go within a couple of weeks of school beginning. Whoa. So you just jumped right in there. Yeah, teaching high schoolers how to how to get busy. The positive way. Did that inform your creative process as an illustrator at all? It helped because a lot of the compositions, Mm. like when you when you when you're when you're taking a photograph, a lot of things that you consider. We consider the same things in the in the illustra- in an illustration world. Mm-hmm. Um, even when it came to editing my my illustrations, a lot of times I take my illustrations and I go into photo. I mean, not photo. Um, Lightroom, oh. just to do certain types of edit to it. Um, teaching black and white film photography gave me a love for um, for the graininess of film. Oh. And that's something we don't have in the vector world. Mm. So I wanted to I wanted to bring that over to my illustrations. Very so I would cool. do I would use something like Lightroom in order to get those things in there. Oh, okay. You ever find yourself using um the jitter brushes or any any of those like uh, you know brushes that give it a little bit more character I guess a little bit more variation in the line um yes I use I use and I set that jitter brush a certain way so that I may have um make easy puppy cloud work oh okay if that makes sense like you could set it where the bubbles just pop just right depending on how much pressure you're putting on on the screen definitely I feel like a lot of your process is just a lot of patience. (laughs) (laughs) Is it? Do do you find that like, or do you find it like very like meditative, like going in and like making these, you know, fine selections and going in and doing the trimming? Um, yeah, it depends on if I got something good to listen to. Oh, okay. Um, it's not solely based on music. Like, I can draw Kev and listen to Bossa Nova. Okay. <laughs> so it's not really a a big issue of of staying on on brand when it comes to whoever you're drawing. Let me check his head out. Make sure for the reference. See. I'll check the reference. See where his his shadows are falling. Take that okay. one out. Some of these already got my little fine lines in there to mark where they are. Oh, okay. Nice. So you already have like a, a loose idea of where you're carving things out. Yeah. So everything's selected. And let's say by happenstance, I get mm-hmm. up to go walk away. <laughs> a cat jumps up here or a bear comes mm-hmm. into the office and they happen to deselect all that work that I just did on screen. Oh, no. And like what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do? Like in the past, I would have to draw that stuff all over again. Right. Um, the fortunate part is, I like to come underneath at least the body portion of everything. And here go me doing the old man stare. <laughs> and I create a new layer. Mm-hmm. I go right back to that last old tool, and right here at the bottom, load last mm-hmm. selection. So I load last selection. And what I like to do is, I like to get a Get my round brush. I like to crank it all the way up to 500. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to come in here and boom. Oh. Right? Like, oh, man, Rob, you messed it up. Not really. Um, <laughs> This is supposed to mimic, like, the ink wash settings of, uh, I mean, the ink wash process of doing illustration, like, comic book, um, artists do. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to take the same ink that I did my outlines with and just add water to it, so to speak. Oh. So you're adjusting that opacity. That opacity. It feels right. So my flat yeah. color will then go underneath here, causing 
black to be mixed with a hue, which creates a shade. Uh, and look so, at that. Yeah, we're getting there. We are definitely getting there. <laughs> you know, there might have been some folks out there like, dude, when are you going to draw? Well, I think Steve in the chat was mildly concerned. It's like a bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. A bear. Oh my. <laughs> Pesky studio critters, Steve says. Bears. <laughs> Bears, yeah. Y'all got to deal with the occasional fly. Me? No. I'm still a, I deal with bears. <laughs> They're attracted to all the energy. That's what it is. Yeah. All like those lightning, lightning bolts. <laughs> Mountain Dew actually has a flavor called Sweet Lightning. Oh. <laughs> My son gets that flavor. That's funny. Yeah, I'll be on the lookout for that. Wow, that looks really, really nice. <laughs> you know, quite frankly, I feel like you could fool me. If if someone was just like, is this vector or not? I would be like, mm. like not at first blush. I'd be like, no, oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> it's working. It's working. Oh, um, yeah. So normally the process would go as follow. I would... Um, the old way, I would have to go back, probably use that lasso brush. I mean, use that lasso. I would have to trace over the whole entire image. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm showing you the old process of okay. what I had to go through in order to do these illustrations. Wow. So imagine having a gig where you have to do 25 different illustrations. Mm -hmm. And you are constantly sitting here and you're, you're doing all it is with the lasso brush. Um, just in order to apply flat color. Well, Adobe got smart. Because that's what Adobe do. They get smart. They got this thing called turning a layer into a reference layer. Okay. And what that does is it automatically gives me the same powers of a coloring book. Is, I mean, at the most part. I'm coming here. I can find a nice brown for Mr. Brown. I can get my paint bucket. I'm on a separate layer from that reference layer. And all I do is just go in and I can drop in color where I need to. I forgot I got the beard is open. Doggone it. Well, nothing to worry about. Okay. Always go back. Yeah, we can always go back. There's a there's there's a there's a trick for that too. Oh, exciting! So we come in here, get the brown, Mr. Brown going. So that was really um, awesome. Reference layers, reference another layers. another great tip. Let's start use reference layers, everyone, because you're just rocking on a on a completely different layer. But coloring. But coloring. That's and pretty I'm, cool. I'm going to color in here. Mm -hmm. But just know that I can make it look like glass as well because of reference layers. Mm. Um, another thing I can do is I can come in here and start adding, adding my black to certain areas. So we get to see this thing start to pop and come to life. Ooh. I usually mark these areas with an X. Oh. Just like it's some type of treasure. <laughs> the the areas that you're gonna fill with black specifically, you usually mark with X? You usually mark it with X. Mm. And it, it's just a reminder. Oh, okay. Because when you get in a certain rhythm, you, you might forget it. I oh, forgot okay. to put a shadow under this little dip part of your nose. Um, oh. Now, since I don't have these areas closed up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly around the beard portion because my intentions were to have this as an enclosed space. Wow. So I'm just going to go around that whole area right there with the lasso tool. And 
what I'm doing is I'm hunting for holes. Oh. And I don't see any. Ah. Just in case there was one there, I minimized the leakage. Okay. By just doing that area like that. Oh, okay. that's really nice. Starting to get there. We're starting to get there. We're starting to get there. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I usually keep the skin separate from everything else, but for for the day, I'm just going to start putting things in here. Um, I want his I want his shirt to be white. Okay. But pro tip, if you're doing Ooh. faces, um, don't use white for the eyeballs. <laughs> I, think Kev was, I think Kev was born in 77. We want that. We want those portions to fall back into the head. Mm. We don't want them to come blaring out at us like a loud... <laughs> A loud horn, the same fatigue. Um, you want them to fall back. You see, you can tell like when most folks got veneers, like you extra shiny, homeboy. Like um <laughs> You want to de emphasize these things. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> got it. That's a really good tip. Where's the sunglasses at? <laughs> extra shiny homeboy. <laughs> I'm just going around this area just in case I got a spill. Here's my second okay. son coming in now. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. And I want the glasses to be not black, but a charcoal. Okay. Because I got some shaded area in the glasses. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, that looks real nice. Yeah. Yeah, Steve in the chat says, so good. And Robert says, looks great. And I agree. Yeah, imagine if they still had multi-day Adobe lives. But look at all that you've done. Y'all killing it, right? Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's true. Come on. You're doing great. We got like, I don't know, a little less than 20 minutes left. But like this, this feels like something. And, and what I like about it is with the limitations of time as well, <laughs> is that I can have you find me to find out what happened. See. Or I can put it on my Beyonce page. Awesome. I'll be Hansei. You did that on purpose. <laughs> I drop a tool. I like to make that upper lip a little bit darker. Oh. Oh no, spillage. Just there's, a little. There's a hole in there somewhere. somewhere. Oh, it's on the opposite end. Is it in the corner? Yeah, it's on the opposite end. Mm. Got me. Oops, I did that totally wrong. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's just that little pesky corner there. There um, you go. Nice. <laughs> um, I'm also gonna jump up to the top. We'll look for a slightly pink color. I'm gonna deselect that. So I'm in a oops, cancel. I'm in a new layer. Okay. I'm gonna jump around like this, make sure I touch all corners of that. Just to trap that in there since I got open ends there. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to drop a little pink there. Now, he doesn't wear lipstick. He looks like he's a little sad now. <laughs> Not to worry. Um, I'm just going to tone that down just to give it a bit of a pop and difference from the regular skin tone. <laughs> Good old opacity slider. Yeah. Nice. Um, Where's that keyboard? Funky, funky keyboard. Okay, back to the keys. Yeah, Alicia. <laughs> From there. All right, great. Um, I'm going to... Now, I like this mm -hmm. because if I want to set this as my new reference, then all I do is just set it as my new reference. It automatically releases the old reference. 
Nice. Instead of me having to go back and, and do that all over again. Okay. Um, get my black for the black keys. Boom, 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 boom. boom oh, nice. Boom, You're just tapping boom, with the paint bucket. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. <laughs> Everyone imagine the music. Who plays the piano? Not me. <laughs> and I, I generally won't do this on the same layer as the lines, but you caught, oh. me, you caught me on a special day. Oh, okay, cool. Special for Adobe Live, everyone. <laughs> yeah, special. <laughs> Very special. Yay. Um, get this white, drop it down to about 88, since that's how many keys on the piano. Oh. And zoom. it'll ask me if I want to do an vector. It'll just come down and lay these down. Nice. I don't do I don't do stark white because I can add that in as glares later. And 88 might be too dark, but oh. we also have the next thing. Ooh, yeah, why next did that come thing. out? Why did that come out so? Oh, it happened outside. Okay, great. Um, the next thing is, let's say I wanted to make these keys blue. I can go and put that. Um, dang, I'm forgetting my words. Now you're good. Ah, what is it called? What is it called? From getting oh, my words. Oh, that little the clipping mask or clipping mask. Yes. Oh, okay. That's it. Um, I can come in. I can add a new layer. I can change that to a clipping layer. And if I wanted to make these keys blue, find a nice blue. If I wanted to make them blue, I can make them blue if I choose if I choose to. No harm, no foul. Nice. The Guess same, can. the same with um, I'm gonna release the lay, I'm gonna release the reference. Okay. And if I wanted to make these a little wider, then I can come here and let's say we just make it 94. Hmm. Ah, wrong layer. Make sure you're on the proper layer, folks. Boom. So those keys are 94. And I want to make the bottom a smooth 88 just to have it shadow off of the, the composition. Oh, okay. So you're liking it set at 94 for the, the top portion better than the 88? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. It does it. Yeah. Let's see. Set that and just open it up more layers. Just layers, layers, layers all over the place. Hey, you have an unlimited amount of them, so got it might as well use them. And I'm coloring off screen too. Like, you know, I've <laughs> never seen that. I mean, special for Adobe Live. Special for Adobe Live. Special for you guys. Special for our amazing community. So, how are we looking on time? We got about ten minutes left, Rob. Ten minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Speakers are going to be colored in speaker colors. Um, as far as the face is concerned, mm -hmm. what I would possibly do now is come in with the lasso tool and I'll start pushing the lighter areas of the face. Okay. Um, and it's a it's a it's a it's a process similar to how I did the shadows. Okay. Um as a matter of fact, let me take this off. I like that better like that. Um that doorway in the back was going to be a separate space so everything in that archway behind him let me get rid of the reference everything in the archway behind him within there was going to be like out of space scene oh nice with like a orange to blood orange moon like it, i was going to add i was going to actually add a um a gradient believe it or not um within yeah. that and one might ask, like, well, how how are you going to do that? So, I, I would like to know. <laughs> let's let's find out. Um, I like this orange. I'm going to go ahead and make this my reference layer. Okay. And I'm just going to go below it, just because. Um, breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs. Make that vector, right? Mm -hmm. Go into it. with a different layer, select 
that darker orange color, which is right here. And within shapes, I got this special group of shapes called hatching. Oh. And let's wait for it to do its thing. Oh, there we go. I like to use lines in close proximity in order to fake gradients because we don't have gradients on here. At least not vector. Wow. So uh, tap into that. I got it here. The cool thing about making this sample is I can make it as wide as I want to make it. I can make those lines get as close as I want to make those lines get. Mm -hmm. And since I'm on a layer on top, I'm going to hit fill. Will Smith's uncle, Uncle Phil. And then we put that on top there. And we take it and we get out the way. Oh, it was supposed to fill only the what you call it. Not to worry. Then we come back. Worry. Yeah, not to worry. It's, it's <laughs> always a solution. You just gotta breathe and just do it. Um what we do is we jump wow. out of that, deselect that, and look at that subtlety. That finesse. Finesse. It's fun. Very it's so nice. much fun. That was that's a pretty impressive shapes library you got there, Rob. I'm just like mine doesn't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I got half tones, I got arrows, I got all kind of crazy stuff in there. Did you make those yourself and then um, load them into your cloud library and stuff? Yep, make them in Illustrator, load them in. You make them once, you use them a thousand times. That's awesome. I got to get on that. Ted Lasso on the nose. Oh, you're going back to add that uh that shadow that you missed. Yeah, I wish I had more time with you guys. Like we would really flesh this thing all the way out. I didn't pre-cook anything because of some technical difficulties I was having earlier. I mean, this is just I mean, it's been amazing all the same, quite frankly. I mean it's really nice watching your process and like I said, I knew I knew we were in for a treat because I'm like it's gonna be all vector, so I'm a I'm a take away a lot from this. I sneak some I sneak some pixels in there at times. It's okay, we keep that on the low. Yeah, yeah. Oops, <laughs> I said it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Any more questions in the chat? Anybody got anything to say in there? I can't see you guys. Oh no, I mean people are just Umacorn send you more lightning bolt energy. What we got? just a lot of love and steve suggested maybe we could have a dance marathon during adobe live sessions who knows that would be that would be dope <laughs> like but everyone... it has to be in the replays oh yeah but it's okay because then everyone can pick their own music <laughs> exactly let's hint at this beard a little bit with some shadows Whoa. Oh, okay. You're just brushing that in. I'm just like, whoa, what is I'm like, the color's going yeah. in so fast. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Brushing it in. Almost I almost missed that. So you definitely a, a brush over pen tool kind of kind of guy, or, or what are your thoughts? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. For sake of carpal tunnel. Ooh. Yeah. Which Real I used to get problems. a lot of when I when I used to work in Illustrator exclusively with a mouse. Oh, wow. Okay. I have a Cintiq, but uh, I'm using that for 3D. Oh, eventually, okay. Eventually. Eventually. Okay. Well. I'm trying to get on that 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 little, little thing Adobe has that you can create your own 3D textures and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, three D, three D shapes, and I, right. I just want to build. I want to build my own models so I can pose them the way I want to. Oh get the yeah, proper lighting and, and all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, let's get some black into the MPC. Uh, yeah, we got here. got a few more minutes here with Rob. If anyone has any burning questions or or comments for him while we have him live with us, but this has just been such a delight to watch 
And I love when you zoom in, you can see all of the details that have gone into this piece. What if the replay built into Fresco tracked the zoom ins, the tilts? Ooh. Imagine how you can choreograph your replay. Yeah. I mean, those uh, those additional, uh, you know, the customization of the the, the length of the the replay at least has been a nice little uh, upgrade as of late, but yeah, but having all the all of the twists and turns would be <laughs> next level for sure. See if we can make people dizzy. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that would definitely happen. <laughs> but that's cool. I mean, it's it's really nice. I mean, you're working on your iPad, so you can just get right in there, twist and turn, and and use your gestures all day long and I don't know. And, and, seems and, like a nice way to work. Yeah, get wow. Yeah. Work wow, work it. work how you want to work. It's really nice. Who knows? Maybe your friend will release his own uh named uh beat machine <laughs> <laughs> after this. This'll inspire him. Yeah, he might he might do that. He might Say, hey, listen, <laughs> I need my own custom, my oh, own yeah. custom one. A Robzilla something, exclusive. Something weird happened. Oh, unexpected result? Yeah, something weird had happened. I don't have to figure it out. Oh, I know what happened. Oh. Because I couldn't see the pads. So something weird happened. Oh, um, okay. We got that filled in. Um, I like this overall color. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Just dark enough, and we'll lighten it up just a little bit more. But everything else, that part's white in there. This is that same color, and oh, the glasses. Uh, while I got you guys here. Oh yeah. Um, what I usually do is even even beyond the shadows and everything else. Mm -hmm. Real quick, um, I come above that. Um, let's go ahead and set that as my reference. Oh, I'll actually go above that, but set it as my reference. Set as reference. Track this up above that. Um, where is that 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 real light blue? Real quick. Real quick. Make my own. There it is. Okay, boom. Right there. And this is an easier way to do this. Um, I can easily come in here with a brush. Get it all in there. So I'll just do one lens. Okay. Um, make sure I get the, the little essence of the eye out of there. And Thanks to the Adobe creators out there, our good people behind the scenes, they came up with a way for us to use these different blend modes within our work in order to get stuff done. Oh, that's awesome. And then you just go right back in there with the lasso tool. Yeah, with the lasso mm -hmm. tool with, with some white and oh yeah. Get a lighter glare in there if you want. Nice. So you start to you start to really get some stuff going on and things start to happen. No, definitely. Oh my goodness, Rob. You've been <laughs> so amazing. If you would, could you give us just a little trip down memory lane of what we saw today. Just give us a quick recap and then where people can find you online. Well, today we saw too much back to trimming. <laughs> um, we saw, uh, we saw the, we saw how to add form by creating shadows. Um, we saw how these shadows interact with flat color. 
We saw some new vector brushes. Um, we saw how things act differently than they would otherwise whenever you press that friend of mine right there. Um, my homeboy, I call it a modifier. Oh yeah. Um, and um, there's so much more in here to explore. We, we didn't even get to animating anything. Yeah. That's crazy. I forgot. I'm like, yeah, Fresco does animation too. Fresco does animation. And just for in case somebody's concerned, I don't I don't leave the, the blue in there as I work. I eventually <laughs> just pull that that blue out and let everything just everything just sit there and float on top. No, that's awesome, Rob. Sam from our chat, our uh, moderator has put all of Rob's links for social media in our chat. Be sure to be following him. Will you be finishing this uh, and sharing it, Rob, so that we can see what I will, the... I will be finishing it today okay. after nice. I do some troubleshooting. Very cool. <laughs> okay, well, stay tuned for that, everyone. And stay tuned and join Adobe Evangelist, Kyle T. Webster, and learn how to create straight lines, equal spacing, alignment, angles and learn the relevant tricks and tools in a new episode of photoshop for artists thank you so much everyone for joining us thank you rob for sharing your talents with us and we'll see you guys in the next stream bye <laughs>